David, 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 oh, he David. was questioning and he was questioning. Wait, David, I would like to point out Exhibit A. It's, uh, it's, it's page 18, 19 of Red Bull Magazine. This is my face. And, uh, it says, uh, more than 4,000 women, the most Tinder matches. This is their world records issue. Nah. Uh, <laughs> I know, well, we can pass this around. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we'll be down, no. So, so here's the deal. I want to talk about standing out in a crowded room because I think that no matter what we do, whether we run a nonprofit or we run a for-profit business or we're an actor or uh, we're an amazing musician like we saw on the piano earlier, whatever we do, we're kind of playing this attention game. We're brokers of attention. We're trying to get as much attention as possible, but we're all in rooms that are crowded and they might not be actual rooms like this that are crowded. They might be a pool of women on Tinder that may or may not swipe me to the right. Or it could be people that I want to sell my service or product to or whatever. The crowded room could be the competition. You gotta find crazy creative ways to stand out in a crowded room. And the coolest thing about doing it is that if you try something kind of out there and crazy and you fail, all the failing means is that you don't get the extra attention that you want. And if you don't get the extra attention that you want, well then nobody notices, nobody notices that you failed to begin with. And so there's absolutely nothing to lose. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Woo! Heartbreaker, man. So, woo! let's talk about Tinder real quick. So in 2014, I moved from Los Angeles to Phoenix, Arizona. I was a freelance digital marketer that's been kind of my traditional career. And one of my clients, longtime clients, was acquired by this big billion dollar national brand. And they said, hey, move to Phoenix. Let's do this. You get this huge corporate account, free reign. For me, it was a big career move to go and try and work on some bigger accounts and get some bigger social media accounts under my belt. I was really excited. And so I moved to a brand new city. I knew absolutely nobody outside of the office that I was working with, and they were all married and having kids and all that shit that everyone's doing my age these days. And so I didn't know anybody, and so I decided that I wanted to use Tinder to try and meet as many people as possible, not just romantically, although I was single at the time, and uh, I just wanted to put myself out there and try something crazy. And so I came up with this crazy idea. Just show a hands. How many of you know what Tinder is or use it or at least like familiar with how it works? Okay, so for, for any of you that didn't raise your hand, it's a geolocation based dating app. So you're gonna open up the app and you're gonna show show potential like romantic interests, and you can swipe to the right, meaning that you like what you see and you'd be interested in maybe talking or meeting up or whatever, or you can swipe to the left saying I'll pass. And so, when two people swipe right on each other, it becomes what's called a match, right? A match. And, and that said, I'm the most matched man on Tinder. At the time, of, you know, it was a while ago. Anyways, uh, so I moved to a new city. I came up with this crazy idea. I said, you know what? I, I've always been digital marketing and I'm trying to like get people's attention with like banner ads. And I fucking hate banner ads. And I hate Lightbox pop-ups for email subscriptions. And everything that's disruptive to the process, like to the end user, just sucks. But that's what everybody does in this crowded room. So I thought about Tinder like that. I said, well, how can I make it engaging and fun for somebody on the other end? And so what I did was I photoshopped my profile picture. I found a font that was very similar to Tinder's font. And I wrote text on it that said, hot match of the day. And then I put the little, little Tinder logo. So what I did was I made it look like I was endorsed by Tinder. It was like a new feature they were rolling out. And I had been hand curated, hand picked by the Tinder team. I am your hot match of the day. <laughs> right? I saw it. I saw that. You saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. And so, so I did that, and then I just started swiping right on everyone I possibly could, just right, 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 like crazy. I got like 800 matches in about 48 hours. And then I was like, whoa, I think this is pretty, pretty rad. I couldn't keep up. It was insane. So I did. I, I wrote this blog article about why. Doing something like that that's really like native and respective to the platform and respective to the end user is such a better way to stand out in a crowded room than doing what everyone else does. Like shirtless mirror selfies or, or anything like that. Like it's crazy. And so I did this experiment and, and it was a fun experiment for me. I went on some cool dates, I met some cool people, but I had no idea that this article would just take this entire life of its own and it got picked up by like Adweek and FHM and Daily Dot and Business Insider and Entrepreneur and Inc and Red Bull Magazine, and just so much, like, ridiculous amounts of press. And it was cool for me as a digital marketer because I could come in and, like, people already knew who I was. They're like, oh, you're the Tinder dude. 
like you can definitely help us find some weird way to like stand out online. And that's been super helpful. Then what happened was, just to give you guys a little more context of that, is I started getting a lot of guys emailing me saying, okay, well, I got the match, but now what do I say? Like, what do I do? How do I get a phone number? Like, how do I get a phone number? How do I get a date? And so by that time, I had 4,500 matches. That was when the Red Bull thing came out, which was August of 2015. And so I, I emailed, I started collecting emails, and I hate collecting emails, but I did it. And, uh, and so I sent out this one email to, the, to all these dudes. And I said, okay, I have this idea. I've got all this data, and I told them that I had done a little bit more than I had. I said, I have figured out what to send a girl, how to say hello to make them say hi back, how to get a phone number, how to get a date, all these things. I'm writing a book, and you can pre-order it right now for $17. <laughs> Otherwise, you're gonna pay 25 like everyone else. And I had written, I had written a table of contents, and I was there. And I started getting orders. And so I'm like, shit, I better write this book. And I had already had <laughs> timeline like it was like 70 the book was gonna be out in 72 hours it was like in the final touches phase it was not in the final touches phase so, so I wrote this book and and now I mean I've sold thousands of copies it sells for $27 it is a digital product PDF people pay PayPal me 27 bucks they get an email from me with a download that's 50 pages long and it does actually have a lot of data because I'm a data-driven marketer and I te A-B tested to 4,000 women. Oh, do you say hi? Do you say hey? Do you use an emoji? Do you tell a joke? Do you ask a question? By the way, you ask a question. Um, and so it's, just, it's, it's been really cool and, it, and it's interesting because because all of these guys will, will email me after they read the book. They're like, man, this is so great. And a lot of these guys like, 4,000 matches is, is insane to them. They're like, man, I had two matches before this book and now I've got nine. And so oh, <laughs> they're like, they're, they're freaking stoked. But that's really cool. Like, it's really cool. And like working with these guys, now Tinder actually um, emailed me. It was like, yo, you cannot use, <laughs> like, you can't pretend like you're endorsed by Tinder. You cannot use our logo. Don't make us shut you down because we will. But it didn't shut me down. I said, okay, fine guys, fine, fine. So I, I just changed it back to a regular profile, but I kept testing, just really A-B testing. Uh, guys are terrible at, picture, at choosing the best picture of themselves. Everyone, everyone, I think, actually, like has their kind of own self-image. They see the, all their own flaws. Oh, that's my bad side. I don't look good with my hair like that. Oh, I shouldn't have bangs. I shouldn't wear that shirt. But nobody else notices that shit. It's only you. And so people put up what they think is the best picture, and then they don't get the results that they want. And then they think, Tinder didn't work for me. Tinder doesn't work. It's not for guys like me. It's not, it doesn't attract the caliber of girls I want. It doesn't, whatever. But people don't actually do like the science behind it. So what I have guys do is I say, okay, go to a few girlfriends that you trust that's not romantic interest and say, hey, what are the best three pictures of me on my Facebook? You can tell them what is for or not. Go to a few girls. If you start to see a trend, take those pictures and, and you, you follow a really simple, methodical process and it is write down how many matches you have. Change your first profile picture because that's the biggest impact. Nothing else, do not change anything else. Swipe right on 100 women. You don't have to be selective, just swipe, swipe, swipe. <laughs> Wait 48 hours, write down how many matches you have. Subtract that from the original and you have, okay, you swiped 100, you got 18 more, that has an 18% match rate. Then swap it out, put in a new picture. Swipe right on 100 girls, repeat the process, and you will get like scientific data saying this picture of mine has a 23% match rate, this picture has an 18, this one has a 45, holy shit, I think I look terrible in that. It doesn't matter, the data speaks. That's what's gonna help you stand out. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just like, it's awesome. So that's like, that's pretty much the Tinder story. If any of you guys are interested in the book, I will give it to you for free. Like I will, I'll just give you like the URL, you can come at me, I'll write it down, you can check out the book. It's, Cool and, and, and it's awesome. <laughs> the only thing I'm going to leave you with is the, the project I'm doing now, which has absolutely nothing to do with Tinder, but I think that it's a good example of just how I do wild, crazy shit. Um, I've been a digital marketer and content marketer for a long time. I've helped build other people's dreams, and now I want to build my own dream. And so I've always had a passion for art and painting and anything kind of creative and expressive. And so I had this kind of epiphany in a trip to Barcelona where I decided, you know what? I'm just, I'm gonna become an artist. I'm gonna become a full-time artist and I'm gonna paint and I'm gonna go balls deep into San Francisco and break into the San Francisco scene. 
But again, crowded ass room. There's tons of artists that are trying to make in San Francisco. So I said, okay, well, what can I do to differentiate myself? And so I wrote down on a piece of paper all of the goals that I think that artists might have. And that would be like, oh, I want to do a solo gallery showing. I want to sell a piece of art for $1,000. I want to get my art into a big museum like SF MoMA. And then I was like, well, that's actually a pretty crazy goal. And a lot of people want to do that. It's like a lifetime goal. It's where Picasso is, and Andy Warhol, and Ansel Adams, and Chuck Close, and like infinitely like legendary artists. And I said, okay, I'm going to try it. I'm going to do this. Now, how can I make it crazier? Okay, well, how about I do it in 90 days? And how about I go on Craigslist and I invite a filmmaker to move into my house for the summer who I've never met in person before this and just film me all the freaking time so that we can make a short film every single day that documents this process of like what it's like to try and break in as an artist. And so over there is Matt. Well, Matt and I met on Craigslist. <laughs> Not on Tinder. <laughs> but uh, so that's, that's what I'm doing now and, and it's really cool we're on day what is it, eight? So we're on day 38. Um, I can tell you that um, the art scene is really, it's really confusing. There's really no like application process to get into SF MoMA. It's just kind of like you got to know the right people and, and even people at the museum. It doesn't matter where you go. Everyone's like, oh, well, check the website or try and email this person or whatever. So we're still working on it. I think we're going to make it though because the process and the project has been awesome and super rewarding. We've got a lot of people following along with these daily videos. And the video that's coming out tomorrow at noon, that'll be uh, Matt who will be editing that up, which will probably be mostly this talk. So you can skip tomorrow's episode, but then you guys, I would be honored if you guys watch. And if you guys ever need any like Tinder help, like get on me for real. <laughs>